Run, river, run, run through the hills. Run, river, run to the sea. Run, river, run to your place beneath the sun. Run, river, run over me. Hi, this is Jan Lewis. Welcome to be my guest today. We have from Southboro, Mass, Susan Lubner. And Susan has written a delightful book. Now, I want to say it's for children, but I loved it. So it's good for us grown-ups, too. It's called Lizzie and the Good Luck Girl. Can you get a real good close-up? I love the cover of this. Welcome, Sue. Thank you. Sue, it's good um, to be here. I was showing Sue, and I'll show you, too. There's another great thing in this book. But, Sue, give them a general idea. You don't have to give it away what the book is about. Well, the story takes place in a small town in Maine, and Lizzie Sherman lives above her family's diner. And after suffering a loss... Uh, in, a, in an accident with her parents, uh, Lizzie looks to the universe for a sign that everything is going to be okay. Yeah. And so uh, one day while she and her best friend are out searching for a stray cat, uh, they sneak inside an abandoned apartment house mm -hmm. and they find the stray cat, but they also find a young runaway who's hiding and scared inside. And Lizzie will eventually notice that the young runaway has a four-leaf clover drawn on her hand mm -hmm. and she of course sees that as a sign mm -hmm. that the girl is good luck yep. and Lizzie makes the choice to bring the girl home and hide her there uh, because she wants to help the scared girl yep. but also because she believes that this good luck girl can protect her family from another tragedy and she usually she wasn't used to bringing home human strays she was used to kitty cat ones. Yeah, she likes to rescue cats and a dog. And Where Lizzie did you get the idea heart. from, Sue? It's wonderful. Well, the idea for the story, usually when I have an idea for a story, by the time the story is finished, yeah. the idea is unrecognizable. Yeah. Um, I had been doing a little bit of volunteer work with a friend of mine who was giving out backpacks to homeless people in Boston, and which was a wonderful thing. And at the same time, or around the same time, my oldest daughter, uh, sorry, my youngest daughter had gone off to college, and we, had, uh, we were empty nesters for the first time and just the idea of seeing you know the homeless people and having this house with three empty bedrooms and I was thinking there's something wrong I, I these, there's so many people that don't have a bed and I right. have a house with all these beds and yeah. there are lots of situations like that all over the place yeah. where I wish I could help and so I had this idea of writing a story about a young girl that like sneaks somebody who's yeah. Um, less fortunate and doesn't have a place to live inside her house and my writers group rightfully so said that's a terrible idea because no. you know you don't have little kids bring strange yeah. adults into the house even if they are trying to help but she was um, a child that she brought in but the child is a little different yeah. because yeah. it's somebody who's uh, younger and less probably of a threat somebody sure. who's um, obviously in a bad way as well but yeah. li a little person and um, scared and yeah. so that's how the idea started and then it became this story um, but you know some of the things about the stray animals and um, living in Maine I'm from Maine Me so too. where were you were I you was I'm from Bangor were originally. You born there born and raised born in South Portland oh okay so I still have family in Portland yep. and I still have family in Bangor yeah. and so uh, the setting is near and dear yeah. to my heart even though it's a fictionalized town yeah. it does take place in a fictionalized small main town outside of Portland did you grow up there I didn't grow up in Portland but I spend a lot of time there because my brother and my sister and their families live there yeah. so um, and I had written uh, another middle grade novel that actually did take place in Bangor yeah. um, so I didn't want to do that same city again now there's um, you've got to see this now Lizzie and the good luck girl there is a page at where it says chapter one I freaked her out <laughs> it was it's blank it was all these kitty cats all over here and yours truly decided to color them in so if you like to color any age it's fantastic. I mean, I said, "By gosh, that's an open invitation." Oh. There's the there's another end paper that shows the I think that will show the before. I think there's isn't there another? Maybe not. Maybe I'm wrong. But before what? Well, what they looked like in black and white, yeah. not colored. Oh, I guess there isn't. I think okay. it was just the front. But just pictures reason, black and white. Yeah, not, yeah. not colored. All yeah. these kitty cats. And I said, "Oh, that looks like a coloring book to me." Yeah, you did a good job. That is a. So anyway, if you're a grown up, you're a kid, whatever, and you're reading this. 
that's an extra bonus for this book. Now, where have you been appearing, Sue? Well, I'm in the midst of doing uh, a luck and magic tour at several area stores. Well, first, the book launched at Tatnik, which was wonderful. We yeah, had a great... Right up there. Yes. I, know, I know Jean Curry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and yeah. then we did... I did a few library events yeah. uh, in uh, Southborough and one in Berlin, Mass. I've done a few of those. I have a few more coming up. Um, and then I'm with a, a few other author friends yeah. who are also launching books. Um, we are doing... Uh, our books all either have an, a luck or a magic element to them mm -hmm. and so we've we've come together we've done um, at Barnes and Noble we've done at Newtonville books mm -hmm. um, we're going to be at Belmont books we're going to be at the Silver Unicorn how about the book lovers gourmet in Webster very well, we'll popular have to, we'll have to look I know I'm going to be somewhere in Sutton yeah with oh yeah the enchanted passage yes I will be we've there had them on their tour yes very, um, very I know there's other places yeah it's um, called, very Deb Horan runs the um, the Book Lovers Gourmet in Webster, and I sent all my authors up there. I said, you've got to go. It's cozy, it's relaxing, and it's, she's very professional. Oh, well, she well, is well, just, but the that. Enchanted Passage over in that bookstore over in Sutton, it's in that plaza right off of 146, and uh, there are adult book uh, authors there as well as kids' authors, even though I think it was basically for kids. I think it's terrific. The more bookstores, yeah. the better. Absolutely. We love independence. We were also at Newtonville Books, which is a beautiful bookstore yeah. um, in Newton Center, and that was lovely, too. So, yeah, we're uh, making the rounds. You're making, making the rounds. rounds. What, are your, what do your children think? Now, she's got children about my son's age. What do they think of your books? Well, they both read the book, and yeah. they both liked the book quite a lot. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, they're probably a little biased, but they're big supporters. Yeah. yeah, my family's always my husband, my kids, my family, my friends. It's awesome. Now, this is not the first book you've written. No. Tell us about the other ones. Well, I've written many, many books. They don't all get published, but this is actually my fifth book that I've had published. I've written uh, three picture books mm -hmm. early on in my co career, my first uh, picture, so, uh, the first one came out in 2005, mm -hmm. um, but the three picture books were all published by Abrams Books. Um, the fourth book that I, I wrote and published uh, was also a middle grade novel that was published mm -hmm. by Holiday House back in 2012. And then this one is with uh, Running Press mm -hmm. Kids, They're awesome yeah. to work with, and I... I haven't heard of that. It's, there's a lot of these small publishing houses coming up now. Well, they're under the umbrella of uh, Hachette Books, which is quite large. Okay. So it, it's an imprint under a bigger I always um, tell house. my authors, you know, when they come, I said, if you're going to write it, rather than wait a year or two just to be denied, at least for your first few times out of the gate, do a self-publish. Get yourself out there. Get your books out there. It's quicker. It's not expensive. Get out there. Definitely. You could find this book. She's going to tell you where else, but if you're going to see a copy of it down in the Upton Library, uh, generally what age, besides us grown-ups, what age would you say? Um, the book is really geared towards 8 to 12-year-olds. Okay. Yeah. Well, what does that say about Jan? <laughs> oh, I read a ton of middle-grade novels. <laughs> I do. love them. I oh, love yeah. them. Oh, yeah. I read way more middle-grade novels than I do. I try to squeeze in an, an adult uh, book, mm -hmm. but um, mostly middle grade. I enjoy it so much. How can they get a hold of your book? Um, well, you can get it at any independent, really. Tatnik um, probably still has some in stock, but most independents will have the book or have it available. Uh, Barnes and Nobles, um, mm -hmm. online. I Tatnik? don't like to tell. Tatnik, definitely. Yeah. Yep. Tatnik, I said. Yeah, for sure. And uh, most of the online um, outlets online. have it as well. So. Lizzie and the Good Luck Girl by Susan Lovner. And when I first saw, I must have seen in the Sunday paper, they're great at, um, maybe when you were at Tatnak, where did I hear about you? It had to be in one of the newspapers where you were, there was an announcement about you, a little. Oh, okay, it was probably one of the local papers. Yeah, yeah. and I saw that title, I said, boy, this sounds really good. Thank and you. And at first, I thought it was an adult novel. Oh. But when I caught your book in the mail, I said, this is adorable. This isn't it was just a total surprise. And the uh, illustrator got it perfectly. Picture of a kid and a cat leaning against the pole. Mm -hmm. And then, is that supposed to be Lizzie up That's there? That's Lizzie with one of her cats. Yep. Um, and the one leaning against the pole is the good luck girl. Yeah. And Smokey, who you'll get to know. Are you, uh, I bet you you do. Do you have some books coming down the lane? 
Well, I finished another middle grade novel uh, this fall, yeah. writing a middle grade novel, and my agent has it, and we're it's out on submission. So What's the fingers name? crossed. Can you say well, it? it's I don't want to say because it's sort of up in the air. It's a working title. What's it about? Um, it's about a young girl in Maine who's being raised by her single dad, yeah. and it's about um, her mom has passed away, and she doesn't really have any connection to her father's family or any family really except yeah. her dad. And one day she's um, taking this workshop she's sitting in on this workshop where they're doing family trees mm -hmm. and she realizes her family tree is so tiny yeah. she calls it a family plant house plant <laughs> um, but she decides that it would be important for her to reconnect with her father's family who she knows there's been some sort of falling out yeah. and so this is a, her journey and trying to bring her family together and um, you know I think at its heart it's about forgiveness sure and there's a chocolate shop, and there's hot air balloons, and there's adventure, and yeah. it's a... Uh, you enjoy this, don't you? You really get into oh, it. Love I can it. tell. You know, I love you, it. She's like sparkles when she talks <laughs> about her books. Books in general. I yeah. sparkle when I talk. I love books. Did period. you write when you were a kid? Yes. I always was the one that... You know, if we wanted to do a birthday card for my grandparents or yeah. my parents, it you was, made it. yes, uh, let me do that. And I would do it in rhyme, usually. Yeah. I enjoyed writing. My first three picture books um, were all in rhyme. Yeah. Um, did you and, save them for your children to see? Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. Yes, I did. Um, I have a little picture book, uh, or not a picture book, but a story that mm -hmm. I illustrated. So I guess technically it is a picture book that I bring with me to school visits mm -hmm. that I show. It's called Fred Foot the Frog. It's. I think there's actually even a picture of it on my website. Um, but it's Frederick I, the Frog. Fred Foot. Fred Fred Foot the Frog. It's a strange name. I wrote it in second grade. Yeah. So I always say, well, I've been writing for a very long time. This is my first. Is it still in like paper, like the way you tabled? It's stapled together. The paper's yellowed, and I keep it in a plastic little zip um, folder kind How of thing. Cool. That's a great way to get the kids to want to do what you do. Yeah. I it's just like so. inspiration. Like, inspiration. See what I did? Yeah. yeah okay, so sure. you made it at high school. Did you know you were going to go into writing at high school by the time you got there? No, but I still like to write. I was still writing... Um, I just found this thing in this scrapbook thing that my mother put together. I had forgotten about it, but you could submit different things. It yeah. wasn't a school, an actual school newspaper or anything. It was some kind of local magazine thing. Um, when I went to college, I took a writing course and I had a professor. Uh, I wasn't writing children's things, but he was very encouraging. He encouraged me to um, submit my stories, yeah. uh, which were like short short stories yeah. for like an adult audience. Um, and he, he encouraged me to submit them to a uh, collegiate magazine, mm -hmm. which I did. And they published two of them and one won a best prose you know, yeah. award, and so I had a little bit of a boost of confidence and thought, oh, maybe I can write. Yeah. Um, and after that, I did do some writing, um, but I shifted gears, gears into children's writing when my own children were very young. My oldest daughter, specifically, was really young. I was reading a lot of um, children's books and going to the library and bookstores, and I saw an ad for a children's um, lit workshop, yeah. which I had never done before. Yeah. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to try this. I really enjoy reading these kids' stories. And that's how it all began. Um, after that workshop, I really started writing kids' books in earnest. And yeah. um, I formed a writer's group that was about 20, 24, 23 years ago. Where was that? In this area? It was in Framingham when Borders Books was yeah. in business. we used to have it right in Worcester. I miss it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I used to go there nine. from time to time, and yeah. it was it was a good place to yeah, go, and they yeah. had a wonderful children's department, and that's where it all started for me. That's actually where the group, the mm -hmm. workshop, was held at Borders. I met my mentor, mm -hmm. Jacqueline um, Dunbar-Green, and I met a, a couple of members of my writer's group who were still in the same mm -hmm. writer's group sure. with the addition of one other um, writer. And, um, and what college did you go to, sir? I went to Simmons in Boston. Okay, and what did you major in? I majored in advertising and marketing, yeah. which, you know, years and years and years ago, the marketing part is probably outdated, but I do think in a way it's yeah. suited me a little bit. I uh, loved it too. Marketing my book. I yeah. went to college, majored in art, didn't use it, went, went to business school, got my degree there, became a secretary, a uh, rep, uh, whatever you call it, a, a CEO assistant, the whole thing. You know what? I had enough corporate <laughs> up to here. Uh, a little too creative for that. You know, I'm not just going to sit there and answer the phone and type, you know, no, no, sure. no, no, no. But um, when you have a creative personality like you do, Susan, and like I do, it's extremely tough to sit there 
and just <clears throat> buy rote. I don't know about you. I tried bagging groceries many years ago. I flipped. I think it lasted one day. And I think I went to Burger King one day. I'm like, what? It, there's nothing. There's nothing here. I don't even get to talk with the people, really. I just got to keep going and going and going. Oh, no. I like to interact with the other people. Now, you've been on some other television shows, right, you said? Oh, gosh. A long time ago, I did, uh, when my, I, my first book that I wrote was um, with a friend of, uh, a, a fellow writer. We co-authored it together. Mm -hmm. She was in my writer's group, Beth Raisner Glass, and she and I um, did a... Uh, segment, I can't remember what it's called, but it was with one of the Boston yeah. stations. Um, and then I'm trying to think. Was it AM or FM? No, it was TV. Okay. It was, I think it was CBS. Okay. Because I remember, I think her name is Paula. She didn't do it. Paula's Paula, on? No, Paula Eben was there. Yeah. So I know it was CBS. I think she does work for CBS. Yeah. But she wasn't the one that did it. I forget. Mm -hmm. It was a man. Yeah. I don't remember the name of the, um, and I think we were on a radio show mm -hmm. once too and then I did a a segment on somebody who does a read um it wasn't tv but it was uh reading with Robin or something it mm -hmm. was a long time ago my second book came out and that was nice but mm -hmm. um I feel like there was another tv thing but I can't remember what so it you're was. in Southboro I'm in Southboro you have a station down there too I believe. You have a community access channel. Yes, we do. And I'm actually doing an event at one of the schools, and that community access Good. channel is going to be there filming me. So. Do you know Lisa Shea? She runs the uh, Sutton Writers Group. She's ter you ha she writes. This woman pumps out a mystery, it seems like, every week. Oh, wow. She's been on many times, and uh, she's also a... Um, I think she runs the artist group down in uh, Uxbridge, the Blackstone Valley Artists Association. There's so many different kinds of it's it's great. Every every writers group has a flavor. Yeah, are you still in the, a writers group? Yes, I'm with the same writers group. Um, Framingham, right? No, we meet at a place called the Writers Loft yeah. in Sherborne. Um, I, but Framingham, yes, is yeah. where I met them initially at that workshop. You're yeah, right, I right. met them there. Yeah. Um, I'm still with two. Uh, they were, I think, I don't remember now. We it, it kind of went from a big one to a smaller one, mm -hmm. but now two of the women that I met in that workshop were still in the same They're group, and then there's there. one more. Yes, yeah, so there's four how of many, us. How many? Four of you in the There's four of us, yes. Every groups are different. You can have a wonderful group with four. You can have a wonderful group with just one out in Worcester. Um, my gosh, it's so big. They go in, they talk for about half an hour. Then they all sit there, tons of them in the cafe, and they write. They're doing their thing. Then about an hour later, they're all talking again. And they critique. It's yeah. amazing. I, didn't, yeah. I thought, my God, there's a ton of them. Well, it's really important to be a part of a writer's yeah. group. It's important to get your work Definitely. critiqued and looked at by somebody who is a writer as well. We're talking with Susan Lubner, and she wrote this delightful book called Lizzie and the Good Love Girl. I get, well, it's for the 8 to 12-year-old range, range. Yes. But if you're like me <laughs> and Susan, you're going to love it. Um, and there's that page in there that you can color it. You know, I used colored pencils. I looked at it one night, finished reading the book, and I went, oh, this is for me. These cats, I can't let this page go without coloring it. You didn't know that that would be a, such a hit. I didn't even think <laughs> about coloring it, but I like the way it looks. It's really pretty. You it's did a good a job. It's a lot of fun. How long did it take you to write this book, Sue? Um, it probably took me a little over, or close to a year and a half. I had a really hard time um, finding the ending to the story. I yeah. had written and written and written, and I couldn't get to the end of the story. I think the problem with that was that I really hadn't figured out exactly what it was that my character wanted and what was at the heart of the story. Yeah. And once I figured that out, um, then I was able to finish it. I love it. You know, um, we got to get you out more this way. There's uh, the Milford Library, will often do two to three authors. Also, Hopedale, right up the street. They, we've been to them, but two or three authors at a time. It's, it's really fun. It's not uh, a competition, yeah. it's just right. fun. They're all different or whatever. Oh, sure, yeah. yeah. I love to do library events. I yeah. do, I have one actually coming up next uh, week in Concord with a mm -hmm. middle grade reader group. Those are typically the visits that I do with the libraries that have mm -hmm. um, middle grade uh, book groups. Sure. I did one in Hopkinton mm -hmm. um, where the kids get together once a month anyways. To At the library there? Yeah, they, oh, they read great. the same book yeah. and then we get together for a talk yeah. and um, a lot of times they don't 
always get to read the book yeah. before my visit, but I have designed some book group discussion questions that mm -hmm. can be answered and discussed without having to have read the book. That's that a just great sort of library, too. Play on the themes. They yeah. really redid that. Which one? The, the Hopkinson, Hopkinson is beautiful, And yes. the Northboro, yes. a while back, was redone. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to redo Grafton. Mm -hmm. Uh, gosh, I kind of think what else. I think Westboro is trying to maybe get a new new thing. A lot of libraries are trying to branch out now, get bigger and bigger. Yeah, Southboro's pretty big. Southboro had some water damage in their children's room, so that's all that's being what redone. That's I heard yeah. about something. Yeah, they had some flooding. They had so yeah. They're you know going to be back in, back on track, I think, soon in the next I month. I hope so because I love I that hope. library. Yes, beautiful. like I said, it's on the way to the doctors that I go to down there, and um, I just try along Route Thirty. Take my time. I don't like to go on the highway. I bother go on the highway. Just go that nice Route 30 from Westboro and just take your time sure. going down there. Lizzie, um, Sue, again, how can they get your book? Um, well, you can go on my website. I have links to all of the different outlets, but they uh, all independent stores can have it. Yeah. Either stock it or can get it for you. Mm -hmm. um, Barnes and Nobles. I know that in Framingham they have it in stock. Tatnick. Uh, Tatnick definitely has it in stock. Support your independent. So. That's, uh, you know, I tell my office, I send them to fairs, too. You know, uh, they just had one. You'd love this. They have two. There's one in Rhode Island every year, the Rhode Island Authors Expo. Mm -hmm. There were over 130 authors there. Oh, wow. I walked in. I, I've been to uh, Expo. I'm like, even one of the authors said, she says, I'm overwhelmed. I mean, you are, but it's fun. Yeah. You know, I couldn't possibly meet all of them. Right. But it, it's it's a lot of fun. It's down in Cranston. Mm -hmm. and I know the guy who runs it. He has also a publishing company in Rhode Island. And then every year in July at Danversport Country Club, mm -hmm. at the Yacht Club up in Danversport, it's like a ballroom. Oh, wow. It is fantastic. And you can look at the yachts and you can walk. Oh. And I tell the new authors especially, don't worry if you don't sell a lot of them or if you don't sell any. Make sure you meet the other authors who get their business cards or their bookmarks because that person might know somebody else who would love to have you come. Doesn't you know, it's always nice to sell your book, but don't get down if you don't. Mm -hmm. Because it's it's just first baby you know, baby steps. Mm -hmm. Have you been in an expo? I have been in the Boston Book Festival yeah, back when cool. my picture books. Um, yeah. so that was fun. Um, I have such a poor memory. I can't remember everything. I've been doing this a long time. But I um, trying to think about other fair. Oh, I was just at a book fair at a school in North Attleboro, which yeah. was great. I sold way out down. all of my books. Yeah. yeah, it was a school book fair, which yeah. is great because that's my audience. Yeah. Um, and that was very successful. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so I have been to book fairs and all that yeah. good stuff. You know where you, this would be great. Over at the Grafton Library, there's a wonderful gal that works there, the reference librarian, Heidi, Heidi Fowler. And she has got four book groups going. They're all different. Mm -hmm. One is not so not just young at heart, and it's for those of us adults who enjoy books like this oh. and younger, even young adult books. You know, all that type of thing. Oh, gosh, I got to. Uh, oh, this is adorable. You have to let me know her. Remind yeah. me of her name and all. Because this is this is you know this is adorable. And Thank she's you. got the thriller, the mystery groups, the um, inspirational one. She runs four. Not all libraries are four groups. Right, that's a lot. That's great. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Awesome. Does Southboro have that? Do they have book group? They must have a book group. Well, I know they have a middle grade book group because I, I was there yeah. for for with Lizzie. Um, I'm sure they do. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they do have different book groups, and I know that they're just starting some adult programming, too. I'll be doing a panel mm -hmm. in June with several other authors to talk to um, folks who are interested in writing sure. for children, adults yeah. who are writing for children. So, so how far, if somebody's watching and say, gee, I want to ask her to come and speak with us, how far out would you go travel? Um, you know, I go anywhere pretty much. Uh, but I typically in, you know, Massachusetts or New England areas yeah. where, where you I mostly do my events. I'm looking yeah. forward to this next book. I really am. Well, I fingers I crossed it, it's, it comes to fruition. That would be Maybe awesome. Maybe next, next fall, you said? or next No, year? no, no. I, it's just out on submission, so I have to wait and see you if somebody yeah, who picks it up. Yeah. In the meantime, are you already cooking up another one? No. Oh. <laughs> Not right now. I mean, I'm in the thinking process. <laughs> this is my time. I just finished that in the fall, and then this launched in November, and I have been just straight out it? focused on promoting this. I have, like, little notes in my notebook yeah. trying to just get some ideas flowing for my next book that I will be 
starting to write. Well, once you read this or your children read it, Lizzie and the Good Luck Girl, you're going to want it more. And you've got to let us know when your sequel, you know, your next book comes out. I right? will. It's not a sequel, no. but it's uh, hopefully... Yeah. Oh, I I could, I'll have some good news to share soon. Same illustrator you're going to have? I have nothing to do with who illustrates. That's okay. up to the publisher. Um, he, I love uh, Pascal Campion's artwork, and yeah. he's absolutely phenomenal. Oh, yeah, but even so the colors. Very the col pleased. They draw you right in. Yes. I love that cover. Sue, thanks for being with us. Thank you so much for having me. We'll have Thank you, you. Keep us up to date as to when that book comes out. I will. Okay. And, I will. Uh, yeah, we'll have her back on again. Thank you so much. And you're welcome. We'll see you next time. I'll Thank be my you. guest.